All right, Shalom, 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 first and foremost, giving all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechah HaKodash. Double honors to our apostles, elders of the Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect out there. It's the brother Yeshaya, part of Men of Valor, South Carolina, and this lesson is going to be, as you see on the screen, about fasting. Now, we're coming to the end of the Day of Atonement um, over here on the East Coast, roughly around, well, you know, South, uh, East. Roughly around 7.30. All right. But um, I just wanted to, you know, take away an aspect of this day, um, you know, because the major aspect is uh, acknowledging and paying homage to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right. For sending Yahweh Shah and him perform performing those wonderful acts to redeem us back to the Father Yahweh. But uh, this right here. OK, this. Uh, where fasting, okay, no, I'm just going to read this quote. Fasting reduces the influence of our self-will and invites the Holy Spirit to do a more intense work in us. So that's right. And there's truth to that because when you do fast and you do not, you do deny yourself food and water, especially a dry fast, you know, for a total of 24 hours, you are, you know, uh, basically putting yourself on the level of an angel. Okay, the angels don't eat, the angels don't drink. Right. Because they're not in the flesh. They don't have to appease the flesh. All right. Eating and drinking is something that's pleasurable to the flesh. It's carnal. But, you know, the, the angels don't really have to do that. And they're in direct line with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now, us being in the flesh, when we do it, we're putting ourselves on the level of angels. And it's a very powerful thing. All right. Fasting is a very powerful tool that, you know, needs to be used uh, all year round. OK. Not only just the um, Day of Atonement. Now. Uh, I'm going to say this, every person's, uh, every uh, man's relationship is different, you know, with Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, all right, so I'm going to say that some, some brothers um, can't do it because of health reasons, um, some brothers, you know, I, I don't know, whatever reason that, you know, stops you, but at the same time, it's a very powerful tool that with fasting and praying. OK, because when we get in jams from time to time and sometimes we might be depleted in the flesh and to get back and to rejuvenate yourself and not only physically, but spiritually fasting is excellent. All right. It's like a it's a it's a hack or like a cheat code pretty much. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to start out with some scriptures. Um, I didn't want to make this too long uh, because I've did lessons about fasting in the past but and I was thinking if I should do this one uh, but you know the spirit had it to where uh, yeah I'll just go ahead and do it and um, yeah Isaiah 58 all right and verse 1 cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice as a trumpet so like all right Jeremiah 58 and one, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight, and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their power, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast find ye pleasure and exact all your labors. So there you go. All right. Just wanted to bring that point up because uh, a fast is the affliction of your soul. So when you do, you know, go to the Lord and you, you know, proclaim a fast. OK, it's very pleasing in his eyes and he hears you. OK, it's like an expedited prayer. All right. When you're praying and fasting and you're afflicting yourself and, you know, you're basically humbling yourself before the Lord and you're afflicting your soul. And the Lord sees that. And that's what I got out of that. You know, that's what that means right there. They're, these are wicked people. Um, they they would fast, you know, wickedly knowing the benefits that it does have, but they're using it for vain, you know, um, uh, they're using it in vain. But like I said, I just wanted to uh, show that um, and what stood out to me, wherefore have we afflicted our, our soul and thou takest no knowledge. So that shows you and that proves the point that when you afflict your soul, you know, especially not only on the Day of Atonement, uh, when you afflict your soul whenever you need it, like I said, as per your relationship with Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, it does yield um, benefits, man, high level benefits. Um, verse four, behold, ye fast for strife and debate 
and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So there you go. When you do fast, your voice get heard on, gets heard on high. So when you do get in a, a predicament and, you know, you want your prayer expedited or, you know, um, sent to the Lord, um, you know, expediently, <laughs> then fasting and pr fasting is the way to go. Of course, uh, coupled with praying. Right. So um, the next scripture I got is Joel, the second chapter. And. Verse 12, therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments. So when you do uh, fast, you're actually you're, you're rending your, your heart, your mind, because you're putting yourself, uh, you're inflicting your soul. You're putting yourself under duress because you're you're denying your body uh, things that it needs. OK, uh, very important, pivotal things that it that uh, that it needs food and water, you know, for at least a period of 24 hours. But also intermediate fasting is fa is good as well. But you just don't proclaim a, a fast to the Lord, because the Lord, when we talk about the benefits of prayer and fasting, that is talking about a dry fast. All right. You can't say, OK, well, I'm a fast for six hours and then I'm going to pray to the Lord. And, I mean, you know, still pray, but. A, a real fast is a dry fast from sundown to sundown, roughly 24 hours. All right. Uh, let's see. I think it's in uh, Joel 2 and uh, 13. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your power. Turn unto the Lord your power, your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repent of him of evil. Who knoweth if he will re return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord thy, your power. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. So there you go. All right. Um, that fasting is a part of our custom that, you know, we're getting back to. OK. You know, and in the kingdom, we ain't even going to have to fast because, you know, the scriptures, uh, the, you know, the disciples of John say uh, they ask you, yeah, how uh, hey, why don't your disciples fast? And. Yahweh Shah said, hey, the bridegroom is with them, okay, so they don't have to mourn and fast. But then when once he left and went into the third heaven, okay, on the right-hand side of Yahweh, all right, and, he, you know, he, that's when we mourning, and that's when the time of fasting was, and we're still in that time because Yahweh Shah is, is uh, fastly approaching, but we're still in that window of time where he's not here, all right. He sent his, he sent the, uh, the comforter, okay, which he said that he will send uh, once he left. And, you know, that comforts us, but we're still in mourning because we don't have um, Yahweh Shah actually with, here uh, physically with us, but hey, we, ha we do have him spiritually. So uh, Matthew 17 and 14, like I said, I didn't want to make this long. Um, oh, hold on. Yeah, now... This, this is uh, crazy because I was talking to a brother today and we uh, he was telling me that his uh, son's school got shut down. All right. Um, one of his uh, uh, children's school got shut down. I don't know if it was his son or his daughter, Salaki's uh, brother. Um, but he said that um, one of the kids had autism and basically they shut the school down because the kid ran away. Now, this is so heavy because uh, the brother said, yeah, man, uh, if he's not found by now, he's probably dead. And I said, yeah, you know, uh, he said something about people with autism throwing themselves in water. And I said, man, hey, you know, that's that's a demon. That's one of them demons that Yahweh Shah um, had to, you know, uh, exercise by, uh, you know, well, he, he has a, that powerful spirit. He could do it. But. For the disciples to be on a level to be able to exercise that demon, they would have to uh, pray and fast, which shows you once again that those coupled are very powerful tools. So here it is, Matthew 17 and. Um, yeah, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. 
for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So this is a very strong demon. And a lot of our, a lot of people have this demon on them to this day. Like, you know, everything that that that, that is an ailment pretty much is a demon. And especially those uh, plagues of the mind, you know, like autism and and everything like that. Those are high level demons. All right. And when we were talking today, we were uh, thinking about this scripture right here. OK. And then he told me just uh, about a couple hours ago that 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 uh, the little boy with autism was found. All right. And he uh, drowned in a pond of water. So that demon made him jump in that pond of water. OK. <laughs> and, and it's so heavy because today is the uh, high holy day. All right. The uh, day of atonement. So I just wanted to bring that out. Um Verse 16, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yahweh answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahweh rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that hour. Then the disciples to Yahweh apart uh, and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Yahweh said unto them, Behold, because of your unbelief, for verily, I say unto you, if you have faith of a grain of mustard seed, you shall be able to say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind go up not out, but by prayer and fasting. So there you go. Prayer and fasting is a very uh, powerful tool that that needs to be implemented throughout the uh, year, man. You know, as per your relationship with the Lord, as I always say. Now, I have uh, I have this last one. Um, and for this one, we're going to go into the book of, uh, let's see. If I can find it, uh, the book of Esther. Book of Esther, chapter 4, and I'm going to get right to the point. Hmm. Okay, yeah. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, this is Esther 4, starting at the top. When Mordecai, Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud, bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whatsoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So they were basically we were on the verge of we were being uh, uh, persecuted and um, had false, you know, witness buried, buried against us by, you know, uh, Haman. All right, Haman was going to try to uh, basically end us as a nation. Now, Haman is an Edomite and Haman represents the Edomites to this day. So. You know, we should be fasting because, hey, uh, this Haman, <laughs> this es Esau once, um, he still has that same mindset and he's going to be like a madman. You know, he's going to, um, hey, he's going to, um, like Revelation 12 states. All right. He's, um, he's going to show his horns, man. All right. He's going to, um, come down with great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. All right. And I'm going to skip down to the point. Uh, Uh, when Esther, um, all right, you know what? I'm gonna end it with that because, um, the point was made, okay? So, um, you know, uh, Esther, by way of Esther, a uh, fast was proclaimed, okay? Um, you know, and let's see. Okay, here it is. Um, Esther four and twelve, and they told and they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Esther commanded to an, um, answer Esther, "Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou also get her, hold this thy peace at this time. Then shall their enlargement." And deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Who 
knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such as time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so I will go into in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I will perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So Esther had used uh, wisdom uh, through the spirit of the Lord. The Lord used Esther to proclaim a fast to the Jews and Mordecai um, because they, we were such in a dire position that we needed an expedited answer from the Lord. So a fasting prayer is very powerful uh, and it should be utilized year round. Um, Lord willing, that was edifying, giving all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Wachahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect. Till next time, Shalom.